Today we're going to look at some substitution elimination. So a quick little reminder, if you're looking at what kind of system of equations this is, since your slopes are parallel, then your lines are never going to intersect, so it's an inconsistent system. Instead of solving by graphing, solving with algebra is usually a little bit easier and more accurate. So first, substitution. Pick one of your two equations and solve for one of your variables, and then substitute it into your other equation. Plug it back into the original and solve. So this one looks like it'd be easy to solve for x, so I'm going to solve this first equation for x by adding 2y to both sides. You could pick any variable to solve for, but it's best to go with which one looks easiest. Now that I have x, I'm going to take its value and plug it into my other equation, replacing x there with what I got. So I'll have negative 6 times 4 plus 2y, and then the rest of my equation stays the same. If I do a little bit of simplifying, multiply by my negative 6, and then combine some like terms, I'm going to end up with negative 24 minus 6y equals negative 24. And then add 24 to both sides of my equation. End up with negative 6y equals 0. Divide both sides by negative 6, and you get just y equals 0. That's half of your solution, because we need the x value and the y value. So go back. Easiest place to go back to is where I've already solved my first equation for x. So if I go back there and I plug in my value for y, I'll have x equals 4 plus 2 times 0, which is just going to be x equals 4. I could use either of my original equations to plug it into, but that is the easiest place to plug it back into. Elimination, a little bit different. If it's hard to solve for one of your variables, then you could do elimination instead. So your goal is to get same coefficients on a variable, but with opposite signs. So if I multiply this first equation by like negative two on both sides, and my second equation by a positive three, then I'll have a negative six x and a positive six x, which if you add those two equations together, those variables will eliminate. So there's multiple ways you could do it. You could do a positive two on the first one, negative three on the second one. This is just what I chose. Any way that'll get you same numbers, but opposite signs. So if I multiplied my equations by those constants, just made them look a little bit different, then I can add those two equations together. I'll get zero X, which is what I wanted. A negative 23 Y equals 10 and then I could divide by negative 23 and get my y value, plug it back in. So multiply by whatever is necessary to get the same coefficients but opposite signs, and then add them together, plug it back in. On this one, if you think about multiplying your second equation by a positive 4, that would get you a negative 8x, which would mean that those x values would add up to 0. So I'm going to do that. So my new equation is going to be a negative 8x plus 12y equals 52. So if I kind of just ignore that equation in the middle there, not a good idea to scratch out in general, but I'm doing it. You could add those two together. Just like we wanted, we'll get our x's to add up to 0. So we just have 14y equals 56. And then if I divide both sides by 14, I'm going to end up with y equals 4. Go back to one of my original equations. I'm going to go with this first one. Just Plug it back in. You end up with 8x plus 2 times 4 equals 4. So 8x plus 8 equals 4. Subtract 8 from both sides. And then divide by 8, you'll end up with x equals negative 1 half. So you can write that as an ordered pair, or you could leave them separate. I like to just go ahead and write it as an ordered pair, negative 1 half, 4. It kind of depends on what your equation looks like, which method is easiest. If you have a variable that looks easy to solve for, like in this one, it looks pretty easy to solve for x, I might just go ahead and use eliminate, or substitution, sorry. So I'm going to add 5y and then divide by negative 1. 
So you'll get x equals negative 10 minus 5y. Then you can substitute it back into your second equation in place of x. Keep those parentheses around it when you substitute it back in, because you have to remember to multiply everything by 6 there. So you get a negative 60 minus 30y on the left-hand side. This is actually one of our special cases, because if you think about adding 30y to both sides, you end up with a statement that says negative 60 equals 36, which is a contradiction, because that's not a true statement. So it's an inconsistent system. If I was to graph it, it would be two parallel lines, and a statement that's not true like that means algebraically we know there's no solution. What would it look like if we had our other case? So if it was really like the same line, where it was consistent and dependent, then your statement would end up being true, and you'd say something like, all xy pairs on my line are going to be solutions to that system of equations, because really it is the same line. So special cases, you'll either get a statement that is not true, no solution, or true, which means all ordered pairs on the line. One thing that you maybe didn't do a ton of in Algebra 1 is solving systems of three equations. So it's best to go with elimination. Start by eliminating the same variable from two different pairs of equations. So I'm going to take the first two equations and eliminate x, which means I'll multiply my second equation by positive 4 in order, order to do that. So if I jot down what my new equation is going to look like over here, I'll have a negative 4x plus 8y plus 4z equals 44. Be really careful on these. It's easy to make mistakes and they'll screw all of it up. So just be really careful on your rewriting and adding. So if I add those together like I wanted, my x's will eliminate and I'll get 7y plus 6z equals 26. Now stick with the same variable and pick two different equations and eliminate x. So I'm going to go with the bottom two because it looks like I could put those two together, multiply my top one by a positive 3, and then I can eliminate my x's pretty easily. So I'm going to do that. New equation, jot it down here. Again, it's key that you eliminate the same variable from two different pairs. Don't eliminate x from one and y from the other. Same variable. So if I add those together, sorry my work's kind of squished and messy here you'll end up with 9y minus z equals 77. So we haven't found any values for our variables yet, but I have these two new equations that only have y and z in them. So I'm gonna put them together, and it's kinda of like starting back with a system of two equations. I can either do substitution or elimination with these two new ones and figure out my values for y or z. I'm gonna do elimination because it's my favorite and I just like to stick with it. So I'm going to eliminate z by multiplying my second equation by 6. So you multiply that together. I know that's 54. I'll fix it in one second. Didn't realize when I was writing, but I'll go back. So if you multiply those together, you end up with 54y minus 60 equals 462. Okay, I don't need that in between equation at the moment. So if I add those together, I've eliminated my z's and I can figure out my value for y. So I'll end up with y equals eight. Now going back to, just prior to, one of my two equations that only had two variables, doesn't matter which, if I plug in my value for y, I can get z. So I plugged in my value of y equals eight, solved this one, and end up with z equals negative five. So we're two thirds of the way there. Now that I have both of those two, go back to any of your original equations. I'm just going to do the top one and plug in both x, plug in, sorry, both y and z, and we can solve for x. So it's kind of a long process, but be careful, you'll get there. When we're all said and done, you end up with x equals zero. So solution, make sure you write these in order x, y, z is 0, 8, negative 5.